Hey guys, what's up? Bird of Passage is back with another video. Currently, I'm at ancient Shiva temple in Kusmanchi village in Kamam district. I used to visit this place very often in my childhood. While this is a famous temple, there is one more place in this village that always caught my attention. In this video, I'm going to show you that special place that has been etched in my memory since then. We are at the pottery house. I always thought of pottery as a fun and easy art, maybe because it involved playing with mud. However, after visiting this place and trying out pottery by myself, I learned something more important. Before I tell you what it is, I would like to introduce you to Venkanna, who has been a professional potter for the past 30 years. He has generously agreed to show us the process of pot making and also gave an opportunity to try it by myself. The basic raw materials needed for pot clay are mud, sand and ash. Simple right? For those of you who like chemistry, it mainly has silica, alumina and water. So the first step of pot making is to gather the raw materials. He gets this mud from a nearby lake. Once the soft mud accumulates at the bottom of the tub, it is extracted and left to thicken under the sun. This is the ash left over from burning dry coconut shells. The ash and sand are mixed with the mud to form clay. The clay is then rolled to make it consistent and free of air bubbles. Presence of air bubbles will cause clay pot to break or explode while firing. So kneading the clay is a very important step and takes months to master. He learned this art from his father. Pottery has been their family business for three generations. After kneading, he grabs a small portion of clay and places it at the center of the wheel. Approximately 20 pots can be made with this amount of clay. Let's talk physics for a moment here. This clay lump is subjected to the centrifugal force when placed at the center. So it has this natural tendency to fly off the wheel. The goal of the potter is to fight this force by manipulating the clay upward instead of outward. Here he is carving the surface to make it smooth and easy to hold. Then he takes the top chunk of this lump to form a pot. During this process, he squeezes the clay and magically pulls it upwards. It is also essential to constantly wet the clay to make it slippery and easy to mold. Right now, he is making toddy pots as they are in high demand. He uses a brush to carve basic designs at the top and a string to cut off the pot.
The pots are then exposed to sun for a day or two. Once they are completely dried, he closes the hole at the bottom and gives a nice finishing by applying pressure with a wooden tool. In the final stage, pots are burnt in hay. On firing, due to the chemistry between silica and oxygen, the black soft clay pot turns into a red brittle pot. Heating too quickly can cause the steam to build up inside and explode the pot. So a potter must constantly monitor this process. Some are left with black coloration when they don't receive enough oxygen during burning. However, they are as good as the red ones. At the time of buying, you can determine the strength of a pot by the sound they make when you strike them with your finger. I tried making one but failed miserably. I learned that in order to be good at pottery, we need to understand the clay and use our hands and imagination to shape a pot. Unlike other arts, it is simply not possible to rush the process of pot making. One needs a lot of patience and perseverance to master this art. Venkanna has been doing this work for many years, so he's an expert at it now. He earns around 500 rupees per day. Rainy season is also not good for making pots, so he does not earn much for almost half an year. At our request, he made a little pot for us. Do let us know if you need such customized pots. We can deliver them. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more such interesting content, please do like, share and subscribe to Bird of Passage.